Every day of the yeah, right, I got Jan January yeah. start the year off. February, Phil. Try Hank. Hank, oh, I'm sorry. I got the, I got a little bit of the dog that bit me or something. I'm not feeling myself today, and I, I I'll know this song by airtime. I mean, I got no problem with it. I've been doing this all my life. Can I go home, please? Come on, let me go home. Let's wrap it up, Henry. Richard's on his way. Everybody, take five. Remember your position. I'm expecting you too, Nathan. Well, boys and girls, what do we have in focus so far this afternoon? Oh, everything is fine. It's just a hundred percent. Did you manage to recut the beginning of the show? Yes, and I must tell you that it looks great. We're still doing the history of the magazine and all the social stuff, but now the centerfolds are just filtered through there a little more sparingly, like you wanted. Great. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Cleo, I want you to call the police. Get some backup for our own security. Well, what for? Because we've had a lot of promo on this show, and we're on live, and we're going to have every nut in town in our laps. Call the police. Smaller than a watermelon. But they bigger than a peanut. <laughs> Incredible. Look at that. They got to use a hot airbrush on that, I'll tell you. Airbrush? Who cares? I mean, who really cares? Because, uh... The human body is a thing of beauty. Right, Hernandez? Am I right? What if I don't sign it, huh? What about that? What if I just tell them it's a matter of manpower down here? Hey, Tony, why do they want homicide for this paradise thing? I thought Metro handled security. What's the matter with you guys? You don't even care? There you go. Look at this. Stone is leaving. Breaking up the team. What? I got a transfer. Yeah, well, I'm not going to sign it. Oh, Dan. You know what it is, don't you? You're depressed, you just turned 40, you feel you lost a few steps. Oh, I hear that. You know what they call it, don't you, Dan? Midlife crisis, that's what they call it's it. It's called getting tired of 2 a.m. phone calls and trips to the morgue, Tony. <sighs> Come aside, Brian. Hernandez, how do you say, don't fix it again, Tony, in Spanish? Maybe you'll understand that. Yeah, right. Yeah, they got a copy of it there looking at it here, drooling over it. Hey, Dan, take a look at this. Cassie Bascom, Angel of the Year. Sort of makes your hands sweat, doesn't she? I don't need that. You are depressed. Yeah, Ray, I'll see you. Not so much they want homicide, they want a plainclothes detective can blend in with the surroundings. Hey, Tony, you're looking at your man. You know what they used to call me in high school? The chameleon. Yeah, well, there's just one other little requirement. Female. What? I'll fill you in a little later, Rose. That's discrimination, Tony, and you know it. Dan. Uh, 
Will you just come back inside and hear me out? That's all I'm asking. Tony, we've been through all this before. So indulge an old friend? Fifteen years? hours, no more 2 a.m. phone calls, you tell him that to Nancy. Yeah, well, that's yeah. exactly what he said last so, time. I got to thinking, well, I don't know whether operation is going to be enough for me, you know? Yeah, well, that's exactly yeah. what you said last time. How am I doing up there? You're fine. Wait, watch the step. One step uh, down. I know the steps there. Just look up above. Oh, okay, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. All right. Hey, what happened to the game? Uh, what is this, cable? It's called Tasteless Adult Programming. Come on, Todd. Hey, wait a minute. That's that uh, Paradise Party. Hernandez is working there. Our Rose. Our Rose. Come on, Todd. I'm watching the game. I just switched it during the commercial. Let's go, young man. Don't strain your eyes, stoner. Yeah, I'll get it in the morning, then. Ready to. And take it. Celebrating Paradise Magazine's entry into your living room. So, uh, <laughs> cover up. I'm peeking. <laughs> Mr. Trainer sent a limousine for me this evening. <laughs> Thank goodness it missed. There's so many celebrities tonight. There's De Debbie, Lana, Frank, Barbara. They're all here. Just packed, full of opulence and money and fun. Because of Mr. Richard Trainer. <laughs> He's so generous. He gave me a group insurance policy. I get a thousand bucks if I'm killed in a group. <laughs> Could you die? <laughs> but I am kind of lucky, though. I, I made a killing in the market today. I shot my butcher. <laughs> oh, forget the frivolity. Look who's here. Miss Congeniality. Miss January. Pamela Cummings. Oh, precious. Come in, darling. Oh, look at this face, ladies and gentlemen. Not a blemish. This is all. Oh. <laughs> oh there is a God. Pam, I'm a great fan of yours. You said something to this girl. I have a joke. Nice dress you almost have on. <laughs> that wasn't it. Let me ask you a question, Pamela. What do you call a boomerang that won't come back? Hello? Anybody in? What do you call a boomerang that won't come back? <laughs> Pam? Oh, a, st a stick. A stick! 100%! She's brilliant. Look at the face. Good night to you in Redford on Rodeo, Leslie. Pamela, can you hear me? Don't read my lips. Good night to you in Redford on Rodeo, Leslie. <laughs> Hello? Hello? You get Hello? her off of there. She's blowing the whole thing. Get her off. could kill, you'd be a real angel by now. <laughs> oh, well, in your case, a little devil, huh, Pamela? You get it? <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> we're, we're really not like that. I mean, people have this crazy idea, you know. Just because we pose in the news, we're, well, you know. Well, it's been nice trying to talk to you, Pamela. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just don't want everybody to think we're all a bunch of hookers. Hookers. She said hookers on TV. <laughs> I'll be okay. <laughs> Guess who else is here? They're all here tonight. You missed nothing. Miss February. Kara Alexander. Come in, precious angel. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Gail Keating. Miss March is here. <laughs> Come in, precious. Look at these. Mm -hmm. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and speaking of Miss March. March, 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 March. I have to go now. <laughs> Come and join the fun.
What hell was, was that? that? Find out, Charlie. Take a look. Oh, my God. Yeah, Stoner. No, Tony. No. Well, if it's suicide, what do you need me for? Oh, yeah? What, did you talk to the room clerk? She's drunk, she's unhappy, she just made a fool of herself on TV. Tony, why run a room? Why not jump off the room? Oh, Dad, give me Can anybody talk to parents? They're flying out from Ohio tomorrow. Listen, Dad, Dad, the desk clerk story sounds a little fishy to me. Look, maybe you want to talk to him. Will you me in the thing that did good? Dad, look, I'm just trying to do a job here. I'm just trying to get the scoop. The girl didn't jump. She came straight down. On the edge of the balcony up there, out to the line of impact is 88 inches. Most of your jumpers really take a leap, not this one. Could she have fallen? Maybe she was sitting on the rail and she went over backwards. Nah, from the way she landed, she probably went over head first and then rotated onto her back. I'll see you kids at the office. Thanks. What do you think? What do I think? I think... All this whining about my instincts and this being a tough case. There's so much smoke. The girl was murdered, Tony. So? Come on. Yes, sir. May I help you? Yes, Detective Stoner. I understand you were on duty when Pam Cummings made her reservation. I was, but it was by phone, so I really don't remember her. Well, she must have registered. Look, this place has been a madhouse. Why don't you ask uh, Lieutenant... Uh, what's his name? Yeah, Brent. I told him of... everything about I, this. I know you did that, uh, but I want you to tell me now. Excuse me, Detective Stoner? Yes. I'm Heather English. I was a friend of Pam's. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... What can I do for you? I uh, just want to talk to you for a minute. Mm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I know what they're saying about Pam. But I just don't believe it. I mean, she never would have killed herself. How long have you known her? Long enough to know that she was basically a happy person. Yeah, well, she wasn't too happy tonight. Have you talked to Lieutenant Brancato? Yes, but he said that you were handling the case. <laughs> yes, go on. Well, there's something else I think you should know. I mean, it might not be anything, but... A couple of months ago, I remember hearing that Mr. Trainer was upset because some weirdo was following one of the girls around. Apparently, this guy was even threatening her. Threatening who, exactly? Cassie Bascom. Ah. Do you know her? No, I've just seen pictures. Well, anyway, tonight when Brancato asked us if there had been anything like that, you know, creeps or hate mail, Trainer didn't mention it. And when he didn't, nobody else did either. You suggesting he's trying to hide something? I don't know. But I thought that since you were handling the case, you ought to know. Yeah, since I'm handling the case. Thank you. What do you mean, maybe? I mean, either you've taken the case or you haven't. I don't even know if there is a case. That's why I want to talk to Trainer. Oh, right. I get it. I mean, this is all just for Tony. Wouldn't have anything to do with all those beautiful women. Yes, come on. I'm a big boy now. Yeah, well, that's what I'm worried about.
trainer? Detective Sergeant Dan Stoner. Oh, uh, yes, uh, Sergeant, this is Cleo Banks, uh, managing director. How can we uh, help you? That's all for now, ladies. Who's that? I think he's a cop. Must be about Pam. Do they always leave notes? No, no, of course not. But in this case, her parents, her friends, uh, everyone says it just wasn't in the card. Oh, uh, Sergeant, uh, let me introduce uh, Kara Alexander, Gail Keating, Heather English. Alan Conti. Sergeant Stoner is investigating Pam's suicide. And the possibility it was not a suicide. You mean she might have been murdered? But why? That's what we're trying to find out. I understand some guy threatened one of your girls, a Cassie Bascom. Well, yes, but that was a very long time ago. Um, excuse me, Richard, but uh, if you and the girls are going to make that luncheon, you better get going, huh? Oh, yes, that's true. Well, girls, if you want to go ahead and get dressed, I'll be with you in a few minutes. Nice to meet you. Mm. Thank, you. Nice Thank to meet you. Thank you. Good too. session. Thanks. I'm sorry. That is not very subtle, but the last thing in the world that I need is for you to frighten these girls. I'm going to have to talk to them sooner or later. You already did. At least your lieutenant did. All right, let's start with one of your girls, this uh, Cassie Bascom. You have her address? Cassie Bascom doesn't have anything to do with this at all. She's not even part of the organization any longer. I still would like to talk to her. Why? Because I want to cover all the bases. Now, do you have her address? You can get it from my secretary, yes. Playfulness, and yet, just below the surface, there's that smoldering sexuality. <laughs> Who writes this stuff anyway? I don't know. Some guy. <laughs> oh, this is great. Raised in the sun washed beaches of Malibu, she is proud of her firm, strong body. Hey, don't you have anything to eat in here? I was basically raised in a bikini, says the forthright Miss February. So nudity has never had any negative connotation. Hey, Kara, bring me another beer, will you? Always full of life and vitality. There's a dime store, kitchen knife, no prints, obviously. Killer was right-handed, according to the medical examiner. Uh, depth of the wounds? It's soft tissue, could be man or woman. What about the boyfriend? Well, he's all in peace. And he was in the living room when it happened. He said he heard a car leave from the road up above the house here. And no footprints. You know, it's all concrete and tile out there. Yeah. Well, if you ask me, it sounds more like an attack on Paradise Magazine than on these girls. Well, if it is, it backfired. That Pam Cummings this year sold out. Sex and death, you know. Big sellers. Huh. The arrogance of this guy. January, February. So who's Miss March? Gail Keating. She's staying at Trainer's Villa. Mooney's going to coordinate security over there. And Rose is going to stay with Heather English, Miss April. So, uh, what does Cassie Bascom have to say? I haven't talked to her yet. She just got back into town. That's where they found the knife. I don't understand why Trainer didn't tell you some creep was following her in the first place. It makes two of us, Moon. Uh, 
Right, we're getting a readout on oh. Detective Stoner for Miss Bascom. Yes. Okay. Detective Stoner, I'm Cassie Bascom. I've been expecting you. Come on, my desk is back here. Thanks. Well, here we are. Uh -huh. Would you like some coffee or something? No, thanks. Nothing. You knew I was coming. Yes, Richard told me. So, uh, this certainly is a far cry from the magazine. How long have you been here? Oh, a couple of months, thanks to Richard. They handle his portfolio here. They're still not at all sure I'll fit the stockbroker's image. Well, then, uh, I guess you know that I want to ask you about that incident with, what's his name? Albert Stark. But it wasn't exactly an incident, Mr. Stoner. It was more like an ordeal. When did this happen? About four months ago. Did you call the police? Oh, yes, but all they could do was warn him. you have any idea why Trainer would be reluctant to talk about this? Maybe he was just trying to protect me. From what? I was pretty overwhelmed by the whole thing. Anyway, I left town for a while and I didn't fulfill my obligation to Paradise. What obligation is that? I was Angel of the Year, if you'll pardon the expression. I had some promotional work and things to do. But I was pretty much of a basket case. Well, you seem to have your feet on the ground now. It's the suit and the glasses, Mr. Stoner, I assure you. Um, listen, this is my card. Okay. You call me if you think of something, okay? Okay. Oh, by the way, who handled your complaint? Who'd you talk to downtown? Um, Sergeant Romney. But you could speak to Alan Conti at Paradise. What? I thought you knew. Stark worked for Conti in the photo lab. That's where we met. Stark took these about eight months ago. Yeah? Was she ever involved with Stark? No, she was just sort of complimented that some guy from Pictorial wanted to shoot some film on her. I mean, I'm sure he came on like some hotshot photographer. Here she was, just a few months on the job as a secretary. So he took some pictures of her, and you showed him the trainer. That's right. And the rest is history. We run a big campaign about how she was discovered right in our own typing pool. She goes straight to the top. Of course, the guy who really discovered her is left out in the cold when... Well, when Richard starts taking an interest in her. Mm. Was that when Stark began following her? No, he just started bugging her at first, which is why Richard finally fired him. That's what flipped him out. I mean, he broke in here and stole the pictures he'd taken, which were technically ours. Tried to sell them to some gossip sheet, along with a story about how Richard had stolen his girl. There he is. So why wasn't he arrested for stealing the film? Well, to keep it all from being dragged out in court, I guess. What about her? That's a good question. What do you mean? Well, it looked as though they would be an item. I mean, you'd expect Richard to be all over a girl like this. Then, poof, next thing we know, Cassie's left town. There's this dark cloud hanging over the villa. Well, what happened? The thing was Stark? I don't know. But the only thing I can tell you for sure about Cassie Bascom is... Don't fall in love with her. I lied to you. Hmm. Can you sit down? It wasn't that I lied exactly. It's just that I didn't tell you the whole story. You see, I knew Albert Stark, and I... I let him take some pictures of me. I know I talked to Ellen Conti about it. I wasn't using Stark. In fact, everyone said he was using me. He claimed to be my manager. He wanted more money. He... And he fell in love with you. 
Not really. He fell in love with what? The makeup? The measurements? Is that what happened with Trainer? Nothing happened with Richard Trainer. I'm sorry, it's my job. I have to ask these questions. I know. It's it's just that everybody assumes the worst. Really makes me crazy sometimes. <sighs> anyway, how's the job going? Any breakthroughs? Not really. Guess it's not like in the movies, huh? A list of suspects, a hunch in the middle of the night. Oh, I wish. Homicide, Stoner. Oh, I uh, That much? Well, when I get home, we'll talk about when I get home, all right? Yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Sorry. Well, so much for my big confession. I'll let you go now. Thanks for coming by. And don't think I assume the worst about you. I know. Goodbye, Detective Stoner. Goodbye. Oh, don't work too hard. Well, here we are. My room's next door. Where's your father going to sleep? In the living room. How old are you, Miss Hernandez? Dad, I'm 31, Mr. English. And you're a police officer, so let me ask you a question. What do you think of young women who pose naked for money? Dad, stop it. No, I want to hear the answer. What about it, Miss Hernandez? It depends on the magazine. Depends on the magazine. It's all pornography and you know it. Daddy, stop it! I'm sorry. Why do you stay here? He needs me. Hey, Montana. Right here. Can't see you go up. Back. Long. Come on, go on. Run. Oh. Sorry, Mrs. Swanton. Dan. You want it on the phone? Okay. It's Rose. Okay. Que pasa, mi amigo? Amiga. And what's happening is that I want off this case, Dan. Oh, Rose, don't get excited. I am not excited. I'm depressed. This whole house, this whole case is depressing. All right, talk to me, Rose. Look. Heather's father is a real dark character, okay? And there's like a religious literature all over the place. And I'm a nice Catholic girl guarding a pinup. Well, just hang in there, will you, please? Dan, I don't want to go to this party. What party? Tomorrow night at the villa, remember? I thought that was canceled. They couldn't. They've got people flying in from Europe and all over. Anyway, Heather wants to go shopping, get a manicure and everything. Yeah, so? So what am I supposed to wear to an orgy? <sighs> it's not an orgy. Um, go out. Buy yourself a dress, get a nice new hairdo, and go to the party and enjoy yourself, because in your heart I know you're going to love it. Speak for yourself, Dan. I'm putting Nancy back on the phone. Ah, not in your life, Fernandez. Bye. So what's this about an orgy? Oh, it's not an orgy. It's a party at the trainer villa, and Rose just doesn't have a thing to wear. Wait a minute. Are you going to this party? I mean, with all these girls running around the pool? It's my job, baby. Where'd you get this, Dan? Uh, the guy at the magazine gave it to me. You can't see Basco's on Fox. 
What do you know about Cassie Bass? Give me a little twerp. Dan, we got the pool, the main hall, and the front gate covered. Good. Stay put, then. Keep your eye on the girls. If you lose sight of them, tell a guy in the area to stay alert. Detective Stoner. Mm -hmm. We all appreciate what you're doing here, but could you and your men be a little less uh, obvious? Yes, sir. I mean, we are trying to have a party here? Yes. Who's that with Helen? Hernandez? Is that you, Rose? No cracks, Stoner. Ah, it's muy bonito. What do you pack your rod? In my purse. Hey, Hernandez. What are you doing after the orgy? Excuse me. Ready? Okay, here we go. This is Meredith McRae. Moments ago, Richard Trainer stated that despite the inflammatory headlines of the past few days, he is certain that nothing is going to mar tonight's festivities. The reason for this, he says, is because of his total confidence in the police department. One need only look around to see the tight security measures here. Oh, this is Nat Correa. He's going to be emceeing tonight's festivities. Let's see if we can get a word with him. Nat? I thought you were through with all this, selling the securities. I am. Glass of champagne? No, I don't drink on duty, thank you. I don't suppose you dance on duty either. Hey, Cassie, why don't you come over here with me? There's someone I want you to meet. Sorry, officer. That's all right. Mm -hmm. You have a nice night.
stone. Guardian of our little Babylon. Covered any clues lately? Not lately, no. Oh, don't be coy, Detective Stoner. I understand you think Albert Stark's the killer. He's just one of many suspects. Who else is? Well, how about you? Interesting. Why me? Why not? Oh, uh, where's Mr. Trainer hiding? Uh, I thought this was his party. And so did he until Cassie Bascom showed up. Well, 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 speak of the devil. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me, but there's someone I'd like you to meet. Mio fiancato. Capisci? Mio fiancé. Sorry. Fiancé. Fiancé? Me. Why, I'm old enough to be your father. You are not. So, uh... Cleo tells me you're a party crasher. <laughs> well, coming from Cleo, I take that as a real compliment. Walk me around for a while. You can walk on duty, can't you? Sure. Come on. The world of paradise. Mm -hmm. So bizarre. Must seem strange to you. Yeah, aside from the girls, the food, and all the Ferraris out there. <laughs> ah, there he goes again. He's such a jerk. I swear the only reason he's still around is because he owes Richard some money. Oh, he's a compulsive gambler. He wrote a fortune in IOUs at the club in Paris last year. There are also some uh, bad business deals, I think. What kind? Oh, I don't know. All I know is that Richard owns his contract for about the next 10 years. So he goes around mauling all the girls, hoping Richard will kick him out of the kingdom. Or at least that's my theory. Well, I would think mauling would uh, come with a territory around here. Yeah? Well, what's sad is the guys you like never do the mauling. Well, if they did that, you wouldn't like them, right? <laughs> well, don't get in the pool yet. Just get near the pool. Come on, girls. The guys can come, too. That's all right. Let's uh, This is water volleyball. Anybody play it? Come on, girls. The volleyball. That's the water. All right. We need teams. Let's have the blondes down here. Real blondes over here. Janet, are you a real blonde? Get a suit. We need you. Cassie, what about you? You're a blonde. Come on, on the blonde team. Come on, What about you? And you play volleyball on duty? Um, it gets my gun wet. Um, what? I got spinach on my tooth or what? I like you. I consider that a compliment, Cassie. Well, you are married, aren't you? Yes, I am. What if I told you I don't care? I'd have to tell you I do. Well, I guess it's time for a little volleyball. Thanks for the walk, Dan. You're welcome. Pick up some water. Will you do that? Just splash for me a little bit. Give me the wet look. That's it. Well, that's a great outfit. I love that. It's fetching.
flick of light. Yeah. Oh, I'll ask the lights to keep your eyes open. Blanket, somebody. Here. Towels, blankets. Get towels right here. <laughs> we'll get you. No, because after the lights went out, it was impossible to see anything. Dan, here's another one. These were certainly in evidence throughout the party. Yes, they were, but, well, if it hadn't been for them, especially for Detective Stoner, Gail probably would have been dead. Thank you, Cassie. Gail Keating is currently listed in good condition at Mission Hospital. But as far as we know, the police still have no suspects in the case. Meredith McRae reporting. No suspects. Yeah, we got too many suspects. We even checked out Trainer's ex-wife. Trainer has an ex-wife? Oh, he did. She died 15 years ago in a wreck. So who does that leave? Well, apart from Stark, there's Nat Cure, who owes trainer mucho dinero. Alan Connie cannot account for his whereabouts at the time. And uh, Cleo Banks, trainer left standing at the altar. But you said that was years ago. Yeah, but Cassie says she's still bitter. And of course, his trainer himself. Well, how do you figure that? I don't know. Just something about the guy. Like guilt. <laughs> Was uh, everybody in the pool last night? Yeah, everybody, but uh, Cleo, she was in a spa alone. What about Cassie Bascom? What about her? Well, you said there was something between her and Trina. Yeah, well, I guess I was wrong. What's she like? Cassie? Well, she's all right. A little confused. Well, I think your son's in love with her. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, I found this magazine that you brought home under his bed. Oh, I need love, babe. That's hormones. Yeah, Stoner. Hey, Moon, how you doing? Was anything taken? Nothing, as far as I can tell. What time did you get back? About one, I guess. Mm. Well, I want all your locks changed. And until we find this guy, I'm going to have someone outside guarding you. Around the clock. You? Sure nothing's missing? Pretty sure. My jewelry's still here. Stereo. And it's not the stereo he's after, Cass. It's you. I check your personal things, records, uh, yeah. books, things like that. Just yeah. got current on Albert Stark. He yeah. lives in Echo Park. Let's go get him. I gotta go. There's two guys posted outside. Don't leave home without them. Hungry? So, so. 
Try one of these, man. Pizza nuggets. They're good. <laughs> no, I'm trying to clean out my body. Good stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Little chicken. Little fish. No red meat. Lots of vegetables. Yeah. Steam. Well, these are real good. You ought to try one. <clears throat> Smell good. Mm hmm. I always have them for breakfast. Oh, what the hell? One can't hurt, right? <laughs> Is that Stark? Stark naked. What's he got in his hand? Big manila envelope. Let's go. Open up. Who is it? It's me from the photo lab. I got some good news for you. I lied, Al. Open up, please. Ambitions to be successful, powerful, and live in beautiful surroundings with people I love. We also found a phony press pass dated the 17th, the night that Pam Cummings was killed. And a receipt from a copy place. Stark went there to copy something, according to the manager, a book. Are you missing a book? No. Do you think he's the killer? I don't know. But he's been at the scene every time, though, hasn't he? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he attack Galen and drive all the way back here and tear this place apart? To warn me that I'm next. That's what you think, isn't it? Uh, that's what Tony thinks. I'm going to have a very tall drink. You want one? Sure. So why do you want to know? Um, I was just curious as all. I mean, what goes on in your head when you're doing it? You mean, uh, when I'm posing or afterwards when I look at the pictures? Either way. Well, 
First of all, the um, session itself is very professional. You know, the lights and the technicians. And you want to look good, of course. And you want to look seductive, too, right? Sure. Every woman wants to be seductive. The right time. With the right man. So, what happens now? With the case, you mean? <laughs> okay, about the case. Uh, you're making me nervous, you know. Sorry. The case. What's the next move? A celebrity field day. What? Games, celebrity games, that kind of thing. Um, Tony thought it would bring Stark out of his hole. What do you think? Well, I think... He's interested in you. <laughs> well, then I'll be there. No, you won't. Oh, so... You really do care. Of course I care. I mean... I don't get the wrong idea now. Oh, I mean, it's, uh... <laughs> what? Come on. I think of something. Give like? <laughs> You could lie. I've never been very good at death. Night kiss. Draw straws. Uh, so, uh, anyway, your master of ceremonies for the day, uh, who's going to have his hands full, keeping his eye on the finish line, Mr. Entertainment himself, Matt Curran. All right, this is the wide one, so give me the whole thing. All right, let me see it all. There you go. There you go. Let me see it. All right. Let me see your best side now. Good side. Good stuff. All right. Stick it out there. That's it. Good. All right. I like it. That's nice. All right. Let me see you with that car now. Let me see you with that car. There you go. 
Now I mean it, Heather. You hit the dirt at the first sign of anything. And don't go into the crowd. I won't, I won't. Okay, Mom? All right, ladies, we're all set. Now, Heather, I want you in the middle lane at all events. And keep your eye on Rose at all times. What about Cassie? What about her? Didn't Trainer tell you? She's taking Gail's place. What? Not only today, but in the centerfold. Where is she? What do you think you're doing? I'm helping out. No one else would, and I figured... Now, wait a minute. I figured I could use the extra 20000 which I can. Now, what's your idea? Coming out here and getting undressed for the magazine? Was that a moral question, or are you just concerned about my safety? Listen, I don't know what you're doing or what role you're playing. But understand something. You wait until we wrap things up here. And then if you want to dangle yourself in front of Trainer, you go right ahead. It's not Trainer, you idiot! Top three finishes. Yeah. Five yeah. 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 Was that a slip on the tongue? Okay, now, lady, this is not exactly Miss America's runway, is it? But they're heading for the competition. Keep your eyes on what's going on. Anyway, five points for first. For second, one for third. You add up with the blue Dan, can you come in for a second? Stoner. Looks like we got a problem. The brown van just pulled up above the hill, above center field. Can you make out the driver? No, I can't really make him out. What do you think? Okay, girls, let's get set. Come on. Are we all set? You just tell me. Yeah, yeah we're set. All right, it's probably nothing. But uh, let's be safe and quiet about this. Send Smitty up there and ask politely for a driver's license. I got it. Mark, get set. Talk to me, man. Smitty's pulling up to him right now. The guy must see him. Dan, watch out. The guy's coming down the hill. Watch him.
This is it? From the whole van? That's it. Except for some burned negatives in a toolbox. This guy must be real sentimental. Not really. No, he's not even in there. I already looked. So what do you want me to do with all this stuff? Hmm. Tell you, why don't you put it in a box for a stoner? Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Heather English is the one who told me about Stark. You kept your mouth shut. I was trying to protect Cassie. Protect her? You're the one who asked her to replace Gail Keating. Uh, who told you that? She did. Are you going to deny that? Dan, the press is on the way over. What I don't understand is why you didn't put Stark against the wall when you had a chance. I told you it would have been a nightmare for Cassie. Why a nightmare? Why? Well... Pictures would have been smeared across every newspaper in the country, and uh, she was already very upset. Have you had a chance to talk to him yet? Not yet, at that time. Have murder charges been filed against you? Not at this time. Well, are you saying this was an attempted murder? I don't know what to call her. All I can tell you is he was unarmed. Come on, Dan. What's your gut feeling about this guy? Is he your man or not? All right. Uh... What we have is a peeping Tom. Now, it happens he was at the hotel the night Pam Cummings was killed. He also was at Trainer's Villa when Gail Keating was attacked. So, as uh, far as I know, we may have the best witness. That's all I have to say, anyway. This has to be what the guy was talking about. He said he copied a book or something. But why take it to the field game? Maybe it's Cassie Bascom's. No, no, I... I called her from the office, and I checked Kara Alexander and Pam Cummings' photograph, not to mention Gail and uh, Heather and all the others. You know, this really is police work. I ought to be paid for it. Yeah, we'll bill forensics in the morning. Meantime, I need it now. Like I said, not much. Did it not occur to the guy it might be a diversion? Or what the hell we're doing here? Yeah. I'll see you later. Any witnesses? No. no. Bye, honey. Yeah. Okay. I forgot to remind your father we're not going to be home tonight. I'm taking you to camp. The head ICU nurse found him around 7 o'clock this morning. Nurse Cody, you're wanted on the third floor nurse's station. Thank you. How you doing? Sorry, Dan. There's nothing for us here. You get that box of stuff from the van? Yeah, I did. Okay. King. Got him right here, Tony. Yeah? Uh, no, it's a washout here, Tony. King says there's nothing. Dr. Cutler, Dr. Frank Cutler. Oh, really? For emergency surgery, staff. 
Is that right? Kure, huh? Yeah, he's under surveillance. All of them are. Yeah, sure. Hey, that's great. Yeah, okay, bye. We got us a break. Got us a break! Wait a minute. What happened? The hotel clerk just found out about uh, Stark's departure and got scared. He was lying. <laughs> Nat Curray rented a room for Pam Cummins. See you later. I know what you're going to say, and it's not my fault. I thought your guy might have been the killer. What are you talking about? Him, across the street. One of yours, no doubt. I spotted him outside my condo last night, so I called the guard. Why didn't you just tell me I was still under surveillance? It's just a precaution, that's all it is. Right. Tony wants me to pick up the hotel clerk. He wants you to stay with Cassie till we figure out security. Okay. What's this? Did Stark escape or something? He was murdered last night. Better go. Yeah. Uh, take Mr. Incognito over there with you. Right. So, you think a hotel clerk had something to do with this? No, no, it's Coure we're after. Turns out he rented that room from Pam Cummings that night and followed her up there. Come on, let's go. Let me look around. To my place? Yeah. This yours? Yeah. So what do you want for dinner? Hmm. Want to race for pink slips? Some kind of joke, some kind of game oh, you're playing come here. On. You shut up. You just be quiet. Get him. Yeah, well, what was he doing at Cassie Basket? Waiting for Dan. He says he called here first, but Dan was out. And why didn't he just call a broke? He did, but the receptionist told him that Cassie had just left. That part's been confirmed by the receptionist. What Dan said all this? That's garbage. You know what I know it. Why else would I come, huh? Please, you tell me. Tell me. Don't let me interrupt anything. So why didn't you just wait outside for Cassie? All you had to do was ring her buzzer. Because some dame with a poodle came up and asked for my autograph. Look, I just wanted, I just wanted to see you privately. I didn't want to sign autographs for people in the street. So a guy, he pulled in, into the garage and I pulled in behind him. And uh, what's wrong with that? So what'd you do? You bribed him like you bribed the room clerk, right? All right, I did that. I admit it. That was that was wrong. But I didn't kill these girls. I mean, why? Come because on. Because you're all training your soul for five years. Oh. <laughs> I don't understand that. That's crazy. How much was it anyway? I mean, how much did you lose? 
Well, it it wasn't all gambling, you know. Some of it was uh, real estate deals that went sour. How much? I don't want to. How much? Three million dollars. Three million. Three million. Three million. What the hell, huh? <laughs> So why don't you tell the lieutenant here about your little tryst with Pam Cummings? He doesn't like to register under his own name because of groupies. Is that right, groupies? Oh, groupies, groupies. So why'd you register under hers? Because she wanted it that way in, in, in case her parents called. So, okay. So you register under her name, you give her the key, and you follow her upstairs. So then what happens? No, I didn't, I didn't follow her up all the way. Look, in the first place, she took the elevator, I took the back stairs. Uh, I, was, I was a little jumpy because, after all, this was a 19-year-old kid, right? So, anyways, I crossed the lobby, she took the elevator, and I went up the back stairwell. I was, I was climbing the stairs, and then I heard something. You didn't get a good look at who came down the stairs. No, but they saw me. Either it was the murderer or Albert Stark. Oh, I don't like the timing on this, Dan. He goes out because he hears screams, and then the real murderer slips down the stairs. No, 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 no. I got off the stairway. I went into the hallway because I heard someone coming down the stairs. So you ran down the lobby overwhelmed with grief, and you bribed the room clerk. No, 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 listen, I don't have to take any more of this. I came in here voluntarily, without, without even a lawyer. No. Oh, take it easy. No, I'm not going to say anything more. Forget it. My lips are sealed on. It's over. All right, all right. Escort Mr. Caraggio back to his cell. Who? That's his real name. Everybody changes their name in this business. Or is that a crime around here, too? When you change it from Italian to French, it is. Go on, get him out of here. So what do you think, Dan? Everybody changes their names in this business. What? No, nothing. I'll see you guys later.
Good morning. This is Meredith McRae. Police today announced a major break in the Calendar Girl murder case. Arrested was Nat Corey, the well-known entertainer and close friend of Richard Trainer. Taken into custody last night, Corey refused comment except to say that he is innocent of all charges against him. Shown here being escorted into police headquarters after his arraignment, Corey has apparently admitted some connection with the first victim, Pamela Cummings, who was killed by a fall from the 10th floor of the Centennial Hotel. Morning, Cass. You look terrible. Been up all night with Kure. Well, come on in. I'll get you some coffee. No, I can't. I uh, just want to say goodbye. Goodbye? Just like that? Well, the DA's boys are mopping up now. Did Kure confess? No, not yet, but he will. So this is it, huh? Sorry, it couldn't have been different. Me too. Oh, I understand Gail's back. You're gonna shoot her centerfold tonight instead of you. Trainer's always looking for a prettier, younger face, isn't he? Oh, well. Take care, Cass. Dan. It was never real, was it? You and me? No. No, I don't like these. Well, maybe. Yes. Oh, uh, just a minute. Detective Stoner. Yes, Sergeant. Congratulations. I was just saying to Cleo that you're, uh, I beg pardon? Well, now, wait a minute. Um, Gail Keating hasn't... What about her? I'd like to talk about this, because it uh, isn't what it appears to be. All right, whatever you say. The garage? Yes, of course. We'll be there. Killer. Tony thinks that these new pictures will prove it. 
What pictures? The guy who cleans out the county ambulances found a photo claim slip with Stark's name on it. It's dated June 18th, the day after Pam Cummings oh, wait was killed. A you saw these pictures? They're negatives, but in one of them you can see the Centennial Plaza Hotel. Nancy's blowing them up right now. Nancy's what? I called looking for you and she volunteered. She's worried about you, Dan. Are you all right? Corey's not the killer, Lois. Then who is? A girl named Julie Worsey. Worsey? I know that name. Yeah, yeah, it's the uh, name of Trainer's ex-wife and his daughter. He has a daughter? He claims he didn't know she was his daughter when she first came to work for him. Didn't know until she was Angel of the Year. Cassie? People change their names. Dan, are you sure about this? She killed Stark because he knew and she was afraid he was going to blackmail her. What? When I couldn't find you, I called Cassie. She knows about the negatives, Dan, oh, no, and that Rose. Nancy's alone. Oh.
but you were never there. <laughs> Dan says you caught a 14 inch rainbow. Yeah, it was good fishing. Um, well, how you feel? Fine, thanks. Had a good vacation up there? Terrific vacation. Thanks for asking. Oh, yeah. You heard about Heather English, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think she'll make a hell of a cop. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Listen, uh, I got that psychiatric report. Oh, yeah? Was that right? Hmm? Oh! Right. Yeah, well, pretty much. This thing at the rice track is bucking me. You read about that? Yeah, Tony, you, we were talking about the psychiatric report on Cassie. Oh, well, the usual thing, love-hate thing with her father and, uh... I mean, a jockey guest shows up with his neck broke just after winning the Piedmont Stakes. The psychiatric report, Tony? Uh, uh, abandoned when she was a kid, you know, and then rejected again when the trainer shows up and finds out who she is. It's a hell of a thing. Uh, you know what's even weirder? Second place jockey just got lunch today. Is uh, Cassie's report in your office? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, listen. I'm going to go read it. You know, there's just one thing we didn't know, though, Dan. What's yeah. that? Cassie's been having what to call these, uh, psychotic episodes ever since she was a kid. Jockey had more dope in him than a horse. And I'll bet you anything that Dan's mixed up in this somehow, too. Uh, uh, Rita can't seem to hell of a look. Is this a psychiatric report, Dan? Republic's down in Central America. I don't want to talk international Get politics the name of the right horse, now. Dan, you won't just believe the, the name of the horse. The name of the horse was Satan Curse. Tony. How the hell's a jockey? Hello? Ride a horse named Satan Curse.